I'm a kind of a gadget kind of gal anyway. I, I'm constantly wanting to look at uh, different technologies that might benefit our patients. We really want to make our mark as offering the highest technology and the best quality care. And so that was another force that really got us thinking about getting an EXO. There is such a broad spectrum of the patients that are appropriate for exoskeleton. You naturally think of that spinal cord patient that can't walk any other way. But the truth of the matter is, is you have patients who maybe just have poor foot clearance. Maybe they're not equally stepping from left to right side. Exoskeleton will help them too. The big hook for me is the fact that it was FDA approved for both spinal cord and stroke patients. And that was a major difference from some of the other similar devices out there. And given the fact that we have many more stroke patients and spinal cord patients, I wanted to make sure we had a device that for as many patients as possible. Before exoskeleton, they were needing rest breaks a lot. And they were feeling fatigue and they were wanting to just kind of, can I take a break, can I sit down? And then in an exoskeleton session, they don't sit at all. They, they're up on their legs and they want to keep going. And we're actually saying, hey, let's stop for a second. You know, we can just see that you're tired. Okay, okay, all right, I'm ready. And they're ready to go again. And so I think it just gives that patient some hope, um, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of ability that I don't think they have with any other type of intervention. The EXO is a very different device than a walking wheelchair. We can isolate down certain muscle groups for the patient to use. We can help them balance. Everything is requiring activation on the part of the patient. And through the therapist, they can create a treatment plan that's really going to help them focus on what their weaknesses are to help improve them. There was that little part of my brain that said, well, how can a robot do what I do? And is this robot going to take away from the clinical aspects and the, the knowledge that a physical therapist has? And the answer is actually no. When we are standing a patient in the parallel bars, we're providing so much support to them. It makes it very difficult to take a step back or to kind of see and cue and give the right directives because you're doing the physical work. The exoskeleton really allows the physical therapist to analyze the gait pattern and then at the same time I'm able to get feedback from the exoskeleton about how the patient's doing with what I've set the steps to look like. If you have a therapist that's moving a leg over a treadmill, it's hard to be very scientific about it and it's hard to, on a consistent basis, provide resistance or assistance for those patients. Well, with the EXO, we can do it scientifically. We can get the data from it as well. We can see how many reps, you know, what activation the patient had, things like that. And so really, if you want to do things on a more scientific basis, the EXO is really the way to go. The settings for the exoskeleton for the physical therapist, sky's the limit. You can really change it up constantly. And you know that's coming from the physical therapist utilizing a piece of equipment to meet the needs of each patient. And that's not happening from just a machine. That's gonna happen because a physical therapist is behind that piece of equipment and is using their knowledge. It kind of spawned this excitement that, okay, I can actually get a patient to walk over ground in full weight bearing and a robot provide the graded amount of assistance that that patient needs. That's amazing. And so I got really, really excited. Actually so excited that I wanted to leave management and come back to being a clinical person. It really excited me about where we're going with technology and especially in, in, in the neurological population and um, what we can do with robotics. Take the next step with us.